This will give us a little better flow in the model for contamination purposes. So we actually see a little better contamination of the lake and of the spring number two. As you get used to the model, you will learn how to adjust the valves to get the desired result. And this is really up to personal preference. We can start doing this by continuing a similar demonstration as before by adding a red dye, which we can call a contaminant. Any number of things can be motor oil dumped down an old well, can be just general garbage, paint, that sort of thing. Although we wouldn't normally inject things down into wells, there are waste disposal wells, abandoned wells where people illegally dump things down in them. So we can introduce waste into the aquifer. As you can see here, as we noted with the blue dye, the red dye also moves very quickly through the fractured rock. The artesian well, because we had that piece in place, is pumping, and now it's contaminating the river from the artesian. As time progresses, we will see some of this dye migrate up through the aquifer, through these breaks in the aquaclude over here, and up through into the river through groundwater flow, naturally uh, recharging the river. We can put dye into number three, which is in the unconfined aquifer. And by doing this, we can demonstrate that the aquitar here, especially in this section where it acts much more as an aquaclude for a brief section, will actually keep this dye from migrating through. It will move along this path. This confined artesian aquifer is protected from below and above, and so this water will remain a different quality than what's above it or below it, depending on what the contaminant is, natural or man-made introduced. You can also note, again, with any type of an audience, the difference of flow rates in a fractured rock, and this is a very cavernous fractured rock for relation purposes. The movement through here is very, very quick. You may get a fractured rock that actually has much tinier, tight fractures and a much more slower movement in the real world. In this kind of medium grain, relative to the fine grain and the coarse grain sand, we see a much slower movement. The plume moves along with the groundwater flow, dispersing slightly. You can see a small amount of it here may migrate around the edge of this aquitar, although that's not unlikely in the way we've got the model set up right now. We can introduce something into the underground storage tank. As I noted before, it leaks. And so we'll see a leaking. And you can press this slowly under in here. Otherwise, if you put it too much, the dye will come out the top of the, of the opening. Because it's a finer material, we should see more of a bit first. And then it hits this uh, more medium material. Should see a more horizontal movement with the groundwater flow. We can also introduce contamination or just septic waste into the septic system. It will come out into the leach bed. And again, push it in there slowly. The more dye you put in, the darker the plume will be. If it's not coming out into this leach bed, sometimes an air bubble gets in there, take your wash bottle, water bottle, clean water, and just spray it out and force it out into it. Now note, because of this clay layer right here, we don't see the more vertical migration. It tends to reflect off of that and come up into the lake. This is what they would typically call a flow through lake. We're seeing groundwater recharge on one side. There is a discharge back here, but it's a very small amount. We can even close that if we desire. And it will be flowing through the lake, recharging this perched water table. You can see that small layer of clay right there. And that feeds spring number two, which is in the side of this hill. You can't see it flowing right now, but as soon as that red dye, you can already integrate through this coarser material, will come out of that spring. You'll see a small pool of red here. So then you can talk about groundwater related to springs, how the quality of the spring as this septic system, which is malfunctioning by contaminating the lake, and then continue to contaminate this spring in time the quality will change. Again, back here, real quick, vertical, more laminar flow. We're also seeing laminar flow out of this well, not going through this layer. 
migrating along. And you can all general arcuate path of groundwater flow. And that's because of the recharge at this point, pushing the groundwater down, will come across, and we should see a flow pattern back up here, causing base flow in the river. Other things to note, notice we stopped introducing the red dye down into the open hole at the bottom of number one, so we don't see new contamination in. This is perfect, not perfect aquifer, but certainly starting to clean up slightly. And it may be difficult to see, but we can see, if I can push that red dye towards the front of the model, we can actually see where the spring water is seeping out. It's now contaminated. It'll move through this little, what I call the wetlands piece, right here, which again, more has an effect of wicking out the artesian wells, and then drain out into overland into the river. Right now, spring number one, which is down here in this hillside, just above the river, and drains to the river, is not contaminated, but you'll see, moving under this clay layer, the dye is also moving, because both these springs are in the unconfined aquifer up here. This one's pulling out of the water table. This spring here, if we were to line up and take our string and line up our water table, we would see that it is pulling off the top of the water table and feeding that spring right there. Again, watch your flow pads. Moving back up, recharging the, the river.